So, I'm a tad bit late. I did say in part one of this video that if it got 5,000 likes, I'll create a part two, and at no surprise, you guys crushed it. So today I'll be showing you guys six more cheap cards that fool people into thinking they are expensive, and I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one just as much as you did part one. First car on the list is the BMW 750Li. To car enthusiasts, it may not come as a surprise that a BMW 7 Series has made this list. They are among one of the fastest depreciating vehicles to have ever exist, but to non-car guys, they'll still think that a 2-3 year old used one is still expensive for several reasons. For one, the 750Li is a long wheel base model and is absolutely massive. Big cars normally mean a bigger price tag, am I right? And two, it's packed with fancy electronics as you would expect from one of BMW's flagship cars. They pretty much put everything they had into this car. So how big is the 750Li? I'm not exaggerating when I say it's massive. Its wheelbase is around 126 inches. That's 10 inches longer than both the 5 series and the 6 series of the same generation, allowing for both more leg and headroom. To put it into perspective, there's enough room to easily fit a pair of NBA players in the rear seats. Heck, you may even be able to fit them inside of the large trunk which has 17.7 cubic feet of room. I'd say that the interior of the 750Li is definitely the best part about the car. Sure, the exterior looks good, but I wouldn't say it's eye-catching. The interior on the other hand is where the car shines. The 10.2 inch display features something called transflective technology which makes it easy to read in direct sunlight. The night vision system allows you to see warm bodies ahead of you at night and according to some journalists allows the driver to see up to 5 times further than when you just drive with the headlights on. I've personally never used the system myself but I wish I had. I always just thought it was just a gimmick. Anyways, continue with the interior you get power sunshade, ceramic knobs, massaging seats and if equipped with the rear entertainment package passengers are able to control the car's infotainment options from the screens placed behind the front seats. When it comes to ride quality the 750Li exceeds expectations. I can say this since I've personally driven one and I've also been a passenger in one. The active suspension, four wheel steering and near silent cabin makes you feel like a celebrity. By far my favorite part of the 750Li is how quickly it moves for such a heavy car. It comes equipped with a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 that produces 445 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque. And like most BMWs, all of its torque is available towards the beginning of the RPM curve, helping the 750Li accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 4.7 seconds. You gotta admit, that is pretty impressive for a car that has a curb weight of 4,600 pounds. What's not to like? Reliability and high maintenance costs maybe? Other than that, you'll get a monster of automotive technology that features a very capable engine while at the same time having the cabin room and ride quality normally celebrities only get to experience. Best part is that you can find them for around $15,000, which is much less than what they used to go for a few years ago. They used to have a starting price of $91,000 when new. Second cheap car on the list is the Maserati Quattroporte. Not sure how many of you knew this, but the Italian word Quattroporte means four doors. Literally. Leave it to the Italians to make a simple word sound so exotic. I mean, just listen to it. Quattroporte. <laughs> Anyways, at no surprise I decided to include a second Maserati on this type of list. I first included the Ghibli in part 1, you guys absolutely love slamming it in the comment section. Regarding the poor reliability and maintenance calls, so guess what? I'm featuring another one since you guys love this so much. Sure, Maseratis drop 20% in value every time you blink, but hey, that's good for all of us. Well, kind of. A Quattroporte new starts at over $100,000 and within 3-4 to four years they depreciate as much as 75% which makes them obtainable to those that normally wouldn't be able to afford them new. But here's the catch, if you can't afford to buy a new Quattroporte then I wouldn't suggest buying a used one as a daily driver but more so an occasional special occasion car. You know, like a weekend car? That way the chances of something failing is drastically reduced. Something as little as having to replace the foreign door handles can be very, very expensive. Okay, let's talk about the positives. The Quattroporte is essentially Maserati's bread and butter vehicle and it has been, dating back to the early 1960s. Today's modern Quattroporte is a big boy car. It pretty much does it all. It's faster, lighter, roomier, and more frugal than it has ever been. Within the interior, the Italian design comes to life. Quality materials used throughout every inch of space, the perfect combination of technology, wood, leather, and metal makes the interior experience just right. My favorite part about the Quattro Porte, just like the Ghibli, is a Ferrari derived engine. It's packed with performance and sounds excellent through the exhaust pipes.
There are two engine variants, but to be honest, the one that you can find for cheap is the twin turbo V6 on the SQ4. The twin turbo V8 found on the GTS, while excellent, will cost you much more to get. That said, the twin turbo V6 is no slouch. It produces 404 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It's a perfect amount of power for the all-wheel drive system that is mostly rear-wheel drive bias. 100% of the torque gets sent to the rear wheels during regular driving conditions, and when the car detects slip, 50% gets sent to the front. If you're willing to take a chance with a used Maserati, well, then the Quattroporte is an excellent choice. Gone are the days of the ridiculous, unreliable transmission. You'll get a super sedan that looks exotic, looks much more expensive than what it is, and most importantly has a Maserati badge up front. And instead of paying more than $100,000 for one, you can find them for around $25,000 with low mileage. Third car on the list is the Infiniti Q60. I don't know what is it about this car, but I absolutely love it. I managed to feature it in two other list videos of mine. Feel free to disagree, but I believe the exterior design is among one of the best there is for a two-door luxury sports car. It doesn't try to be something it's not. It doesn't have a cookie cutter design that's become a norm in the automotive industry. Sadly, this car doesn't get as much tension as it deserves. I mean, the G35 was a massive hit. The G37 was as well, but the Q60, not as much. It's rare that you see them on daily commutes, but when you do see one, it's hard not to stare. At least, that's my case. My neighbor owns one and I must have seen it over 200 times and I still catch my eyes drifting towards it. It looks like a very expensive car, even though it's Japanese. The interior looks great, the layout looks sleek and modern. I definitely like the dual display setup where you have the top screen dedicated to the navigation system and the bottom screen for everything else. The idea seems great, but coming from a person that has played with the infotainment on the Q60, the top screen lacks the pixel quality and the responsiveness that other modern cars have. But turn them off and they look great. Engine wise, you can opt in for the two liter four cylinder turbo or the three liter V6 turbo. And let me tell you this, if you're into tuning, the turbocharged V6 is the way to go it has massive tuning potential this is by far one of the cheapest engines to get power out of to the point that it's not even worth spending an extra 10k for the red sport 400 i actually made a video explaining how on five different cars including both the q50 and the q60 that said the stock turbocharged v6 produces 300 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque oh yeah and try to avoid getting a q60 that has the drive-by wire technology equipped if you don't know what that is it's essentially fully electric steering there is no direct connection between between the steering wheel and the front axle instead you have two motors that turn the wheels for you and as you can imagine road feedback is practically non-existent unless you tweak the settings to simulate the feel think of it like this you'll feel like you're in a forza simulation Another thing that I'm not a big fan of is that as sporty as the Q60 is they don't offer a traditional manual but that's not a surprise but get this no paddle shifters there is a manual mode but no paddle shifters so odd all that said, if you're looking for a car that attracts lots of attention and gets many compliments, well, the Q60 is for you. You can find them for as low as $16,000. The fourth car on the list is the Jaguar XF. This was and still kind of is an important car for Jaguar. It helped them climb back up the ranks. It was the first real modern looking model that broke away from the excessive chrome and round headlights. It first debuted for the 2009 model year and then receiving a much needed facelift for 2012. I say much needed because I was not the biggest fan of the semi bubble headlights up front this is a car that many think has an outdated look and others like me think the opposite doesn't look old at all well at least exterior wise the interior is a bit lackluster technology features and quality within the cabin are subpar to say the least but that's okay most people will only really get to see the amazing look and exterior and performance if they get walked which if you ask me that's enough to make people believe it's more expensive than what it actually is can't forget about the Jaguar badge, it's pretty exotic for most non-car people. Heck, it even looks a bit exotic to some car guys. While the interior is not necessarily eye-popping, it's quite pleasing to look at and it has a minimalist look with some quirky features scattered throughout. When the ignition is switched on, two pretty cool and gimmicky things happen. One, the air vents automatically open up and two, the gear level pops up from underneath the trim. Cool? Yes. Will it impress your friends and family members? Maybe. Will this be reliable in the long run? Probably not. Will it be expensive to fix one of those two quirky features if they were to ever break? Most likely yes. Depending on your driving needs, you can find the XF in two different engine variants, the more efficient 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo that produces 240 horsepower and 251 pound feet of torque, or the more powerful naturally aspirated 3 liter V6 that produces 340 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque, which in my opinion is the go to option. No one, I mean no one would picture a 2 liter engine in this aggressive looking car. The sound you get out of the V6 is already not that satisfying, imagine the 4 cylinder one. 
Uh, so who is the XF4? Well, it's for those that want to go slightly out of the mainstream cars, such as BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, which you tend to see more often on the road. I know some people may see it as an old car trying to do new tricks, but honestly, it depends on the driver's needs. But when it comes to the pricing you can find them, there isn't much you can complain about. You can easily find them for under $10,000. Fifth and final car on the list is the Lincoln MKZ. You know I couldn't leave out an American luxury car from the list. Let's get this out of the way first. Yes, I know that the MKZ is pretty much just a glorified Ford Fusion, but that's okay. You'd be surprised how many car manufacturers do the same within their models to save costs. I decided to include the facelifted model which makes it look twice as expensive as the previous version that featured the controversy and weird butterfly style grill. Instead, the grill that MKZ carries now resembles the Continental, Lincoln's most expensive sedan. That's pretty much the main reason I included the MKZ, because it misleads everyone especially when looking at it from the front. There is one thing I respect about the MKZ. Unlike other modern luxury sedans that are all trying so hard to be sporty, the MKZ stays in its lane. It focuses more on comfort rather than performance. You know, like back in the days. It features a continuously controlled dampening system that reacts within milliseconds to give the rider a comfortable and buttery smooth ride. The panoramic roof is quite the feature. Unlike many used on other cars, this one slides back all the way, sort of making it feel like a convertible. The 10 inch infotainment display is large and fits in nicely with the center. Center. The gear selector on the other hand is very odd and would hate to see this used on more future vehicles. It's not a traditional lever style gear selector nor it's a, like a knob one you rotate. Nope, in the MKZ you get buttons that are laid on the side of the infotainment system which is so odd. I once drove one and had to parallel park in a very tight spot that required me to move forward and reverse several times. My mind was I don't know how to explain it, but it just didn't feel right or natural. Performance wise, you can opt in for the turbocharged four cylinder engine that is rated for 240 horsepower, or the turbocharged V6 that can produce up to 400 horsepower if equipped with the all wheel drive system. You can easily find both used for under $15,000, so the choice ultimately will be yours. But it's nice to have options. Any thoughts? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with some of the choices that I included in this video? Either way, make sure and let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure and hit that like button. And if you want to see more in the future, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. That way you don't miss out on my next video. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.